hello welcome back to the channel if you're just seeing me for the first time hi i'm chidera peters and i just love to help people so in today's video you might be wondering why does she have a white board yes i have a white board in my kitchen because i just want to help you get it right so in this video i'm going to be talking about plagiarism okay so if you are a student in the UK or if you'll be studying in the UK this is something that you need to know how to handle so you don't have issues so I'm going to cover what it is in this video I'm going to cover types of plagiarism and then I'm going to cover how to paraphrase okay um, and then I'm also going to cover best practices um, so best practices for paraphrasing now this is part one of this video in part two i'll cover quotation marks how to use it when to use quotation marks but it depends on the feedback i get on this video so if you're already loving what you see make sure you give this video a thumbs up drop a comment because i always read my comments drop a comment just so i know and let's get started just before we get started do you send money to nigeria if you're living abroad well you can use send wave to send money to nigeria so Either you send dollar to a domiciliary account with either GT Bank, Access Bank, First Bank, or UBA Bank. All you have to do is just sign up on the app and then send dollar to the person's domiciliary account. If they don't have a domiciliary account, that is okay. You can also send money down to Nigeria using the dollar cash pickup. As long as the person has a Naira account with Zenith Bank, GT Bank, Access Bank, or UBA Bank. And in a matter of minutes, they'll have the money in their account. So just to recap the two options are dollar to a dollar domiciliary account or dollar to a naira account with any of the four banks that i mentioned and also when you sign up on the app using my code peters p-e-t-e-r-s you get five pound off or five dollar off your first transaction so make sure you click the link in the description box sign up and ensure you use my code all right <laughs> now back to the video what is plagiarism what is it okay Plagiarism is the intentional or unintentional failure to credit someone's work or ideas, okay? So it is intentional and it is also unintentional. So I want you to, the key thing I want you to note here is unintentional. So it can be that, oh, you forgot to do that. That will still count as, as plagiarism. Like you forgot to give credit to the person, that will count as plagiarism. If you intentionally did it, that still counts as plagiarism. So it is the intentional or unintentional failure to give someone's credit for their work or their ideas. It could also mean passing someone's ideas or works as your own. So you're not giving due credit to the author, to the person who said that, to the place where you got that idea from. That counts as plagiarism, okay? Now, let's look at the types of plagiarism. There are different types of plagiarism. Um, the very first one I'm going to mention is verbatim plagiarism. So just like it says verbatim, it means you copy word for word someone else's work or ideas without giving them credit. So verbatim plagiarism, okay? So maybe someone says something you literally copied and pasted and you did not cite, so there was no citation, and you did not also use quotation marks. You know quotation marks, right? Also known as speech marks, this marks, right? You didn't use that. So that's the first type of plagiarism, verbatim, literally control C, control V, copy and paste. That is what is known as verbatim plagiarism. The second type of plagiarism I want to highlight is what is known as patchwork plagiarism. Okay, so patchwork, like it says, patchwork, it means you copy someone's idea here, you copy someone's idea here, and then you put them together in a written text, and you don't cite anybody, you don't give credit to anybody. So it's like you trying to, um, because you don't want to do, for example, because you don't want to do verbatim plagiarism, a lot of people do patchwork, where they're like, okay, if I, if I copy this here, copy this here, paste it together, they will know I copy this. It will still be ranked as plagiarism, okay? The um, plagiarism software, which is used in most schools in the UK, known as Turn It In, is going to pick up patchwork plagiarism where you copy different sources you put them together and you don't cite or quote any of the authors 
Now that is patchwork plagiarism. The third plagiarism type, which is actually the most common type, is paraphrasing plagiarism. Okay, paraphrasing plagiarism. Now you may wonder, how does paraphrasing count as plagiarism? It does. So for example, if you read something right and then you write it in your own words, but then you still fail to cite the author it counts as plagiarism because that idea was originally not yours you read it somewhere it doesn't matter if you wrote it in your own words you need to still cite the person so this paraphrasing plagiarism is one of the most common one among students okay it's very very common because people be like oh i've already i wrote it in my own words you know why is it still ranking it as plagiarism it is going to rank it as plagiarism um, because you're not citing where you got that idea from, especially if that idea was not originally originally yours, okay? So now, the fourth type of plagiarism that I want to talk about is global plagiarism. This is the worst of all. I feel like anybody who does this should just be taken out of school. So global plagiarism means you buy the work online. You know, there are some sites that sell essays and all of that. You literally bought someone else's work and you submitted it as your own. This is global plagiarism and it has severe consequences. So you definitely do not want to do that. Now, the last but not the least is self-plagiarism, okay? Self-plagiarism. Now, this is when you've already submitted a work before, maybe on a different assignment, and then you submitted that same work and edited it slightly. So you're actually plagiarizing yourself. So yes, yeah, self-plagiarism is actually a thing and you need to avoid it as much as possible. Now let's look at the consequences of plagiarism. What are the consequences? Studying um, in the UK or in any like educational um, facility, plagiarism is highly frowned upon. Because imagine you not giving someone credit for something that they researched and worked so hard to put together. So one of the consequences of um, plagiarism is definitely the academic failure, okay? Where you are failed on that course because your plagiarism was too much. Ideally, your plagiarism score should be less than or equal to 20%, okay? So when you submit an assignment, this is the safe spot. So if they say, oh, your work has 20% um, similarity, that is fine. If it says it has 18% similarity, that is fine. But if it's more than 20% similarity, you might want to check it. But at the same time, this also varies for courses. So you want to ask your tutors, you want to ask your lecturers, now what is the safe spot for um, similarity score when you submit your assignment? What is the safe zone? But ideally, generally, 20% similarity score is okay. Anything more than that, try to bring it down to 20%. So like I said, the first consequence is academic failure. Now the second consequence, Consequent. <laughs> the second consequence is an academic hearing okay so academic hearing is when you are called in by your lecturers or by the head of the department and then they sit you down maybe in front of a three-man panel and they want to ask you questions they're asking oh this work we can see a whole lot of plagiarism what happened or if maybe for example if you did global plagiarism um an academic hearing could be one of the consequences i also know of someone who recently had to go through an academic hearing in the uk because her work had a chunk chunk load of plagiarism in it so this is another consequence then another very severe consequence might be suspension okay right so you might be suspended from school for a limited like for a certain number of time and then the last which is actually the worst is expulsion okay if you're always plagiarizing you're always copying people's work you're not giving them credit for it in an academic setting um, expulsion could be one of the consequences of plagiarism Okay, so I hope this helps. We'll be going into how to avoid plagiarism now that you know the basics. Before we go on, I want to mention that I have an academic coaching program, which is a 12-week program to help you prepare for and get ready for your studies in the UK. It's a program that teaches you the basics like plagiarism, academic writing, how to carry out an academic research, how to design an academic posters and academic poster and lots, lots more. Presently, we're about to um, launch the second set of the program. The first set of the program ran for three, three months, 12 weeks, and we have wrapped up and the 
feedback has been amazing so today is the first of august by tomorrow the second of august registration for this academic coaching program opens up literally what i'm teaching you here is me trying to condense something i do for one hour plus into a couple minutes so when you sign up for the program you get direct interaction with me these are live sessions where you can ask me questions where you can get tons of resources and also learn from other guest facilitators so once again click the link in the description box and set your calendar immediately it is the second of august tomorrow registration opens and then there are limited slots on the program okay let's carry on <laughs> so we're going to talk about how to avoid okay plagiarism i'll just go p you know what that is plagiarism now the very first way to avoid plagiarism is true paraphrasing okay but effective paraphrasing remember one of the um, examples of plagiarism is um, paraphrasing plagiarism so the way to avoid it is effective paraphrasing that's one way now the second way is the use of quotation marks okay use of quotation or speech marks depending on what you call it um, let me just put it here so this quotation or speech marks and the third is proper citation and referencing okay these are all of the things that are deeply covered in the academic coaching program so proper citation plus referencing these are the ways to avoid plagiarism so for the sake of this video i'm going to cover the first i'm going to cover effective paraphrasing in depth today and then if you're enjoying this video give it a thumbs up drop a comment so i can do this in the second video and maybe i'll do this in the third but ideally just sign up for the coaching program is much much better than me trying to condense all of this information in a very short time so now i'm going to be talking about the easy steps to paraphrasing okay now the very first thing i always advise is to read the text severally so whatever it is you are trying to um work on whatever essay you are trying to write work on read the essays or the articles read the documents let me put documents read the document severally now the thing is everybody has their style of learning for me i can read a document once and get all the key points but then if you know that reading it once doesn't work for you read the document severally at least twice because when you read it that way you can now begin to understand it and so you can draw out concepts from it the second thing you want to do is to know Note down concepts okay so as you're reading it what is standing stand in um, english as you're reading it what is standing out for you what are the concepts what are the things as you're reading you're making notes by the side what are the key points what are the lessons like what are you understanding from what you're reading so you want to note them down now the third easy step to effective par paraphrases write in your own words okay write in your own words okay <laughs> so when you finish noting down the concept you've read it you've known that concept then you begin to put one and two together so what do i understand by this 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 document is saying this but what do i understand by it so you definitely want to rewrite in your own words your fourth easy step is to compare texts okay so now that you've written down in your own words compare your own words so your own versus the original text so look at the two and see if you are digressing if your own um if the things you wrote in your own words is digressing a lot from the original do you understand so when you write you also compare it with the original just to ensure that you're not like overly copying and repeating what is in the original the fifth and final which is the most important not the most second most important because i feel this is the most important writing in your own words the fifth is citing so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you've read someone's work you've understood it you wrote it in your own words you still have to cite okay because that thing that information you're writing you got it from somewhere you read it from someone's work they are not originally your words so you definitely want to cite so in this case i'm going to cite chidera 2021 okay so you want to ensure you cite the source even when you paraphrase now i'm going to be talking about some best practices for effective paraphrasing number one start at a different point from the text okay start at a different point 
So if, for example, you're reading an article and then it starts with maybe the opening, for example, um, according to Facebook 2021, um, users are now declining in their regular posting of pictures. That's what you're reading. When you're trying to paraphrase it, don't start your own tool by saying according to. Try to change it. So you can say Facebook in 2021 said that so you've already changed the starting point do you understand so start at a different point from the original article when you're paraphrasing don't start at the same point that that article started or that that um sentence started from read it understand it then start at a different point in your own paraphrasing okay now the second best practice is to use synonyms as much as possible okay so use synonyms um there's this word i want to pronounce now i struggle to pronounce it i think it's a thesaurus please tell me if i got it <laughs> so a thesaurus gives you synonyms okay you can google thesaurus online so use as many synonyms as you can find do you understand so that you can always replace some words for other words use synonyms now the third best practice is to change change the sentence structure okay change the sentence structure um that means you might want to change from active voice to passive voice or you want to change from passive voice to active voice i'm going to explain what active and passive voice is in a minute just so you get it the fourth best practice is to break up long sentences okay so break up one long sentence when you're reading break it up into two break up long sentences into two or you merge two short sentences into one okay or you merge two short sentences into one all right so these are the best practices when it comes to effective paraphrasing so now i'm going to talk about this changing the sentence structure and i'm going to highlight what i'm going to talk about this i'm going to highlight what active voice and passive voice is just so you understand so I, I mentioned active and passive voice okay so this is active and this is passive voice i'm sure in your if you remember your english days um you were taught this but just as a refresher let's go there so active voice what is active voice active voice means that the subject carries out the action okay subject carries out action then in passive voice the action is carried out on the subject. The action is carried out on subjects. Okay. Now, let me just give you some examples. Example one. So we have the boy kicked the ball. The boy kicked the ball. I'm using shorthand. <laughs> Bear with me. And then we have the ball was kicked by the boy. Okay. The ball was kicked by the boy um by the boy so one of this is active one of this is passive clearly from our definition active voice subject carries out the action let's see let's 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 identify the subject in each of this the boy here is the subject kicked is the action the ball is the object okay so let me write that um this is supposed to be brief because i'm sure some of you already know this so this is object this is verb and this is subject so from our definition this is active voice okay so this is active voice because the subject carried out the action which is to kick the ball now in this we say the action is carried out on the subject the ball was kicked by the boy okay the ball was kicked by the boy this is the action but it was carried out on the boy in this sentence okay so this becomes passive voice uh, passive voice all right so this is our um, object this is our verb and this is our subject so one good way of paraphrasing is to change the sentence structure if it's written in active voice you might want to try and write it in passive voice this would help you avoid and keep your plagiarism score low okay so now what we're going to be doing we're going to be paraphrasing this sentences just so we have some examples now this sentence says symptoms of influenza could include fever and a nasal congestion now if i want to rewrite this one way i can rewrite it, i can just say fever so i'm starting at a different point fever and fever and stuffy nose nasal nasal congestion i can change it for stuffy nose yes fever and stuffy nose could be signs that you have the flu okay could be signs that you have the flu. 
so you can see this is effective paraphrasing i started at a different point and then i wrote it in my own words this is the original text this is my paraphrase but at the same time don't forget that you still have to cite the author so i'm going to cite the author remember i'm just i'm just using a freestyle of referencing here there are different types of referencing there's apa there's mla mla <laughs> there's apa there's mla there's harvard all of that i'm just like just freestyling okay so chidera 2021 that is it that is an effective paraphrase now let's also paraphrase this the, the second sentence says giraffes like acacia and hay and they can consume 75 pounds of, of food a day now to paraphrase this one way to do it will be mm, let's see one way to do it i can i can since they're talking about a lot of giraffes i can just make my one giraffe it's still a valid point okay so i can say a giraffe okay now let's see a giraffe hmm i can say a giraffe can eat okay up to 75 pounds okay of acacia and hay so a day i'll change it to daily daily okay so you can see that this is the paraphrase. This is my paraphrase. Now, what, you, what one thing I want you to notice here is this is a very long sentence, what we call a compound sentence. Giraffes like acacia and hay. There's a comma here. And they can consume. It's long. Mine is shorter than this. Mine is one simple sentence. A giraffe can eat up to 75 pounds of acacia and hay daily. Okay? So I made my own sentence long, shorter, while the original text was longer okay i hope this helps um let me know if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up drop a comment so i can do the part two and tell you how to use quotation marks effectively to avoid plagiarism all right thank you so much for watching thank you so much for liking subscribing feel please share this video with someone who is in the uk who is studying or any students you know at all who might find this helpful till next time guys bye bye Hehehe <laughs>